Both of them are more than a decade old, and I remember all the details of them even to today. If that happens to you, that was real. That was a true communication from someone that uh, we used to think was dead. All right, what, what about experiences of light? How common are they, or am I just an oddball? What kind of what, what experiences kind of, experience? of light? They're not normally even talked about, although they're in the Bible. I'll just say talk briefly about what what happened to me when I was eight years old, little Christian child. I woke up in the middle of the night and I knew that there was no God. I was certain. I was terrified. And then there was this flash of brilliant light in the room. I remember what the room looked like and off a wallpaper to this day because of that flash. And a voice said. You wouldn't know what it is to have me unless you knew what it is to be without me. I will never leave you again. And I thought that was great. I thought, okay, if you forget there's a God, they remind you I went back to sleep. But I never heard that anybody else had an experience like that. And I never asked a question, so I never got an answer. I was so frustrated. I I, I majored in early Christian history in college because I thought in college they'll tell you what happens if you forget there's a God. Never asked a question, never got an answer. Then when I was 20, I was so disgusted with myself for having majored in majored in something I couldn't really use to earn a living, uh-huh. must be a minister. So I came home one day at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, broad daylight, sat down on my bed, over my right shoulder splashing in the room. There was the same light. This time there was beautiful music with it. The same voice said, I will never leave you. Then I started praying really That's hard. That's really cool. Never- isn't it, isn't it amazing? I started praying really hard then that please mm-hmm. don't ever do that to me again. I promise I'll never forget there's a God. So I've never had one since. But that shaped my entire life because I had to know what that was and where it came from. And um, I, I now know who the voice was. I know why it was done. I know all of that. But it took me, you know, a lot, a good part of a lifetime of study to, to pick, puzzle it out. And that's why I do this work today. But I should just point out that there are at least two in the Bible. Um, We all know about Moses in his burning bush that's not consumed. That was an experience of light. There's a voice sort of speaking out of the bush. And Paul, when he was, actually his name was Saul back then, on the road to Damascus, uh, there was an, he had an experience of light. He was stricken by a blinding light. Mine was not blinding. And spiritual light is not blinding. But in point of fact, he felt blinded by that light. And Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he became the Apostle Paul. So it's happened to other people, but it's really rare. And it seems to be, I've heard of a few from people, but it's always a spiritual issue. It's, It's never a physical thing or it's never about loved ones. It's always a personal spiritual message. So, uh, you know, that's that's a rare kind, but that certainly was as but as spiritual, tr- spiritually transformative as, as anything could have been for me. It shaped my whole life. Well, people have had instances with the light um, and what they do is they start thinking, oh, what's wrong with my eyes or what is this or am I losing it or, you know, why am I seeing this? Um it took me forever to figure out that the golden light from the tunnel was part of the experience. And so, um, uh, and seeing my mother and grandmother and <laughs> grandfather and uncle, you know, in that light, uh, that confused me even more. It felt very, very comforting. So there are people, I have a client who, um, had surgery. And so when she was recovering, she saw three beings, beings of light and they told her that she would be okay and not to worry. And so then they disappeared and she survived her surgery and she's doing quite well and she's continuing her recovery. So yeah, that sort of thing is that is a spiritually transformative experience. This is one more story I almost never tell. My mother um, almost died. Um, she, she was supposed to die, but she somehow recovered. She's very, very old. And um, after two weeks, I, uh, um, I, because I was going, coming and going, when I came to see her two weeks later, she was in rehab in a, a nursing home, and she said, I'm going to get to stay longer. And I said, well, how do you know? She said, the big man told me. I said, what man? She told me that the night before, a very tall, glowing, thin, glowing man had walked into her room and had, had said, we're going to give you a little more time here, um, and um, then walked out again. I, I, my mother had never heard 
of this kind of visitation. And it does happen extremely rare, though. I've only heard of a couple. Um, but a, a very elevated being, well, like happened with your friend. That's what made me think of it. Those are probably six level beings um, who, who come to us and tend to, to give us messages of reassurance, mostly. In both cases, that was messages of reassurance. But sure enough, my mother lived four more years and they had said that was impossible because of her heart. So um, these hmm. in life, they say in life we are in death. In life we are in eternity, which is the opposite of death. There is no death whatsoever. So I'm just going to ask um, Carla, what 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 are you doing now? Are you working on another book, or or how can we help you with your research? Well, right now what I'm doing is I'm investigating uh, families with Holocaust background. Um, because there's this misconception in the public that, oh, you know, the Jewish culture doesn't believe in life after death. Oh. And so, oh, I wanted to take a look at how the Holocaust impacted that. What, what, what was it like before? And, you know, what's it like now? And it's fascinating. I mean, I'm just getting some fascinating work from that that is just really something i'll share one example um a woman was in a concentration camp and she died and so her daughter was in a concentration camp too elsewhere and the mother came to her in a dream and told her that she would be able to escape and that she was supposed to go to a particular barn that was owned by christian friends and that they would take care of her and that she was to look for her brother so she did escape she ran into the forest and then she came across the barn described by her mother and then she heard her brother's voice and so she went into the barn and the owner was there and he was supplying food products and um things that would help them be okay and so, you know, I mean, it's like I have tons of accounts like that. Uh, so I think that culturally, people feel a little differently about that. Eastern culture, they kind of, they sort of embrace it. They embrace it. Western culture is not really right there yet. My mother-in-law was um, a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant woman. She was, you know couture and <laughs> dressed yes. to the nines all the time. And she was head of the French department and she and her husband had come over here. And because of that, they did not suffer the camps, but her sister did and her brother did. And so she never knew where, where anybody was. And her father was picked up by the Russians and shipped in gulag with my family. I, my family he probably was at the same gulag and didn't even know it. Um, but the thing is, is that I think that these experiences, when they come for people who have had a lot of trauma and they haven't worked out their trauma, oftentimes they just don't know what to do with them. Right. And so, you know, the PTSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome, is just the same for Holocaust survivors as it is for a child who's been incested or violently abused. Sure. So that's the, that's what I'm working on right now. Do you um, need stories? If people have a story that they want to share with you, how would they get it to you? Oh, they could email me very easily by... Sending it to D as in dog, R as in Robin, S as in squirrel, Brandon, B R A N D O N, at live.com. L I V E. And okay. I would appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, it just continues. Um, I just, I can get so caught up in this, reading all this about people who you know, have these premonitions. I, I have a friend. Last I saw him last night, and his mother told him, in a year, I will be dead. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, and, that's to and Tommy true. just said, Tommy, he just said, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> right. <laughs> but within a, within a year, she passed. So and they're, they're, they come in all shapes and forms. The consistency is the love that comes with it, with these visions. Yes. You know, the caring. Yes, uh, there was a Greek family uh, that I worked with, 
And the entire family together witnessed a departing vision of their mother. Isn't that great? They all saw. Yes, yes, they saw. And so actually <laughs> the mother got mad because her sister was there who was deceased. <laughs> she kept saying, find a place for her. Get, you know, get off that chair or let her yeah, sit there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, uh, let her help in the kitchen. <laughs> But really, some of these are just ex- extraordinary, and yet people do not share them. They'll share them with a professional like Carla. I get emails almost every day with that would be something we could talk about on this program. But um, for the most part, people don't talk to, to you know family and loved ones or professionals that aren't in this field because it is so hard. It's you're you're afraid to be made to feel like an idiot for one thing, and it's precious to you. You don't want anyone to say that didn't happen. You know it did happen. Carla, what's your website? How are people, how could people get in touch with you and how can they find out what you're up to now? What's your website? Well, on my website, I have some stuff on departing visions. So that's a good place to start. And my website is www.carla with a C, um, Wills, W-I-L-L-S, and then Brandon, B-R-A-N-D-O-N.com. And so they can peruse that, and there's lots of suggestions. Uh, I think that the one good thing about the net is for people like us, when we have these experiences and we don't know what to do with them, we can go, we can go on the net and take a look and see what's out there. Yes, so wonderful. take advantage of that because Absolutely. this is something, these experiences have been statistically analyzed by a woman friend of mine in Ireland by another friend in England. Um, I mean, they have been examined. And what comes out of this examination is that there's something to this stuff. You know, when we have these visions, we're not seeing, you know, like the the guy who comes and uh, pulls the weeds in our yard or who collects whatever, the garbage, or who comes and uh, stops by just to say hello. It's not, it's not the living that we see. We it's see, deceased. Yes. They're, they're on the other side. And so and um, they, they if want us to we, know they're fine. That's the big thing. I'm okay. So will you be. That's right. And so the deal is, if we could, as a society, embrace this, there wouldn't be fear of death. And don't you think that would be amazing? And how would, would that change. transform the world? Would change it everything. Would just transform it. Yes. So, yes. Carla, you are doing the Lord's work. I appreciate so much what you're doing. And we'll have you back again when you have your, when your next book is ready to come out. I'm interested in that, too. But meanwhile, uh-huh. um, thank you so much. Big hug. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. And everyone, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. I am so glad you could be with us today. And please never forget that you are a powerful, eternal being. You never began and you never will end. And when you really understand what that means. Believe me, your whole life will be transformed for the better. Next week, we're going to be talking again with our wonderful friend, Joyce Stewart. This is her fifth visit. Joyce does such a wonderful job of deeply understanding then simply explaining so many aspects of spiritual growth that she's become one of our beloved resident experts. Her topic next week will be a central one, which is how our thoughts in meaningful ways will actually establish our reality establish who we are and what we're up to and what happens to us. So please don't miss this. This is a very important concept that we all must better understand. And Joyce is lovely. She can make even very complex concepts that I couldn't explain feel simple and easily mastered. So join us next week. This week we've been talking with Carla Wills Brandon. Just quickly, her books are One Last Hug Before I Go, which I think is fantastic. It talks about deathbed visions, also heavenly hugs, comfort, support, and hope from the afterlife, and a glimpse of heaven, the remarkable world of spiritually transformative experiences. Perfectly frankly, um, I have to tell you, I think this is an area which is going to explode. We, we get near-death, I mean, yeah, near-death experiences. 
I have trouble saying that term because, of course, the people who have them are nowhere near death. It's a, a total misnomer, but that's what we call them. We get that now, but there's so much else that happens. It's much even more common that we don't understand anything about. So let's begin to look at all of that because when enough of us understand what is going on, 